This is the story of when two instruments, the directional gyro and the VOR receiver, met up and became close, creating a single, new instrument called the Horizontal Situation Indicator, or HSI. The HSI is a combination of these two instruments, allowing you to have heading and navigational information in one place, making your instrument scan easier. The instrument itself is a bit more complicated at first, and the knowledge test has some of its toughest questions related to this instrument. We'll break down those challenging questions in a bit, but first, let's learn about how this instrument works. First of all, this is still your standard run-of-the-mill directional gyro. Here we are on a 230 heading. If we turn right or left, the HSI responds accordingly, just like the directional gyro does. Nothing fancy. Since the HSI also combines the VOR function, let's take a look at how that works. We're on that 230 heading flying along this airway, the 050 radial, inbound towards the VOR. If we start to move to the right of the airway, the green needle deflects to the left, just like a VOR receiver would. This needle is the CDI. It'll deflect the opposite way as we move to the other side of the airway. Also, just like a VOR, we can select a desired course with the OBS function. We can twist that knob at the bottom left, and the green course selector will move from 230 to 240. We've now selected a 240 course inbound to the VOR. Since we're not on that course, the needle will deviate off center too. When we twist back to the inbound course, we're actually flying the 230, the needle will center up again. Notice the course selector has a green head with an arrow that points to the selected course and a green tail with no arrow that is the reciprocal of the selected course. So that's the full functionality of the HSI. Let's have an example using all of them. Let's say we're up here, north of the airway, headed west. We'd like to get back on that airway and track it inbound towards the station. The airway is the 050 radial. We don't want to fly that heading as it would be flying away from the station, but Instead, we want that to be the reciprocal of our heading. So we'll twist the knob so that the tail is on that 050 and the head with the arrow is pointed at 230. Now the indication that we get is that the CDI or needle is to the left of center. Remember from VORs that we need to chase the needle, so we'll turn left too. But what heading should we turn to? If we turn to our desired course of 230, we'll look like this. Sure, we've chased the needle by turning left, but all we'll do now is fly parallel to the airway. We won't rejoin it, the needle will stay to the left of center and we'll never actually pass over the VOR station. No, we'll need to turn more to the left. We'll use a heading of 185. Now, notice the indication on the HSI. The needle is to the left. Our heading is pointing us in a direction such that the white lubber line is pointing at the needle. We're literally chasing the needle now. This is the great visualization that the HSI gives us. We can see our intercept happening here. So as we fly this heading and approach the airway, the CDI needle will swing towards center, indicating that we've reached it. At this point, we can turn our 230 heading inbound towards the station. Everything is nicely centered up and we just need to keep it centered as we proceed in. Now we'll get closer to the VOR. Since we're flying to the station, that white triangle is pointed the same direction as our green arrow which just like on a VOR is the 2 indication. When we fly over the station, this triangle will flip from to to from. Notice how the white triangle is pointed the opposite direction from the green arrow now. Okay, we were promised some knowledge test questions on the HSI, so here they are. The test will give you a VOR station with four radials splitting the area into quadrants like this. Then you'll get an HSI with given indications. Let's say we're looking at this HSI here. We need to identify the direction the aircraft is pointed and where it is in relation to the VOR. Let's start with the easy part, the aircraft's heading. We can read this right off the top under the lubber line as 205 degrees. So the aircraft will be oriented like this. Now we don't know yet where this aircraft is in relation to the station. Notice the green course selector arrow. It's pointed at 090. Also notice the white triangle pointed the same direction as the green arrow marking the two indication. What the instrument is set up to do is have us fly inbound to the station on a 090 heading. If we were to do this, fly inbound to the station on a 090 heading, it would put us on this radial right here. 
However, if this is where we were located, the needle would be centered, but it's not. It's deviated to the right. This means that in order to get on that line, we'd need to chase the needle to the right. Since that's the case, we must be up here above the line, left of course. Let's check our work by actually correcting course. First, we'll chase the needle by flying a heading to intercept. This 135 heading here has us chasing the needle. Notice the lubber line pointing straight towards the deflected needle. Now, we'll hold that heading until the needle centers, then turn to our inbound heading of 090, and everything's centered up. Let's try another one. We'll start with the easy part, aircraft heading. It's 135 degrees. Now, we need to figure out where this aircraft is located in relation to the station. The course selected is 270 degrees. This time, though, notice the white triangle pointed to the opposite direction from the green arrow. This is the from indication. This means that our desired course is to fly outbound from the station along the 270 radial. If the needle were centered, this is what our position would be. However, the needle is right of center. If we want to fly on that radial, we'll need to correct to the right. Where would the aircraft need to be such that a correction to the right would put us outbound on the 270 radial? It would need to be down here below the radial. Let's check our work again. In order to chase the needle from the 135 heading, we'll need to turn all the way around. Now our lubber line is aimed straight at that green CDI needle. We can fly this heading till the needle centers, then turn to our outbound heading of 270. Notice everything is centered up and the green arrow and white triangle are pointed in opposite directions, which is the from indication. We'll look at some other hard test questions in a bit, but right now, let's examine one more function of the HSI. On a precision approach like this ILS here, we're able to use the green CDI needle as our localizer, but we're also able to get a glide slope indication. Here we are approaching the course. Initially, if our HSI is tuned to the localizer frequency, we won't get any indication until we get closer. So notice the red off flag. What happens when we approach though is that the HSI will come alive. The red flag goes away, the green needle deflects to the left, since the approach course is still to our left, and those two yellow glide slope indicators appear on the top, next to the GS for glide slope. These work just like the glide slope needle on a VOR receiver. At first, as we approach the glide slope from below, the indicator will be above center. As we intercept the glide slope, the indicator will fall towards center. If we start to get too high and pass above the glide slope, the indicators will fall below center. As we correct, the indicators will correct to center. We can fly this ILS approach with a really limited amount of scanning. This is the real advantage to the HSI. Now let's get into some of the trickier knowledge test questions, which are based on localizers. The test starts by showing you runway 927. Then it gives you a localizer feather like this one. These two football symbols are marker beacons. This is the localizer course. We know it's the localizer course because of two telltales. First, the shading in the feather is on the right side. Second, because of the presence of those marker beacons. A localizer course uses normal sensing, where we'll chase the needle, which is what we've been used to up to now. As we know, in normal sensing, if we deviate left of course, the needle swings right. And if we go right of course, the needle swings left. We need to chase the needle to get back on course. Here's where it gets tricky. The test will also show you this feather symbol. This is a back course and works differently than the localizer. We know it's a back course because the shading is on the left side of the feather and there's no marker beacons. A back course uses reverse sensing where the motto is pull the needle. Let's go over to that side and see how it works. This time, if we deviate to the right of course, the needle swings to the right. And if we're left of course, the needle swings left. In order to get back on course, we don't chase the needle, but we pull the needle. Meaning in this case, we need to fly to the right to get back on course. This gets really confusing on the test, so here's an important rule of thumb both for the test and for real world flying. No matter what, if the aircraft is on the shaded side of the feather, the needle will be off to the left, as it is here in both depictions. Okay, let's get into some examples. We have this indication. First, we'll start with a simple step of figuring out aircraft heading. It's due north in this case, but where are we in relation to the runway? 
the green course selector is set to 270, which means our intention is to fly inbound to runway 27, which means we're flying the localizer course. Since the needle is centered, we're perfectly on course, which puts our aircraft here. We need a dramatic course correction to stay on the localizer, but for now anyways, we're dead center. Notice though that in addition to this position, the aircraft could also be on the other side of the runway, over here. Just because we've selected 270 to fly inbound to runway 27 doesn't mean we haven't, for example, flown past it to the other side of the runway. In that case, we'd still have the same HSI indication depicted here. The test will often ask you to identify two aircraft positions in this way. Okay, let's try another. Here we start with our aircraft heading of 090. We just have to figure out where the plane is. We've selected course of 090, which is the test maker's way of saying we intend to fly inbound to runway 9. This means we'd be flying the back course. If the needle were centered, we'd be perfectly in the middle of the feather here inbound to runway 9. The needle is deflected right though. We need to pull the needle on the back course. So in order to rejoin the course, we'd need to fly to the left. This means we must be down here right of course. Also note that we might be on the opposite side of the runway like this over here. How about one more for good measure? Our aircraft is on a 310 heading. Where is it located though? We intend to fly the back course as indicated by the selection of course 090. If we were centered up on the back course, the needle would be centered, but it's not. It's off to the right. We need to pull the needle by flying left in order to get back on center. So we're down here again, right of course. And again, note that we could also be on the other side of the runway like this with a given indication. Okay, so that's a rundown of the HSI. A lot of us don't get a chance to use these in flight much as instrument students, but as you move up to more advanced avionics, you'll see these more and more because of their natural advantages in improving the instrument scan. Take some time to practice with it, and it'll make your job of tracking and intercepting a course less of a chore. If this was helpful, please click subscribe so that you could stay up to date on every new training video coming out each Tuesday and Friday and get access to posts and articles that'll take your training even further. It just takes one click and it's so worth it.